Hi, I'm Dave, the RPA guy, and in this Blue Prism tutorial, we'll be going over the environment functions you can see over there next to me. If you look down in the comments, there should be a pinned comment there from me where I have pointed out the specific times you can jump to if you want to look at a certain function rather than watch the entire video. These are the functions we're going to be going through over here on the left, and these are great because they don't take any inputs. So we're just going to be calling those functions, getting the output, checking the output that we got, and then move to the next function. All right, we're ready to go in zoom view. Now there are three things that I want to point out before we get started. First thing is on the main page, I've called the sub page of environment functions, and I've linked that straight from the start to environment function sub page to the end stage. The second thing I want to point out to you is that I'm going to click on the end stage, click breakpoint so that it, the program flow does not go past that. The third thing I want to show you is that I'm going to change the debug speed to fast and that way we get our output even quicker. Even if it doesn't show on screen, I am doing these same set of steps each time. I'm going to drag the calculation stage over here. What I'm going to say is we're going to get is BP server. So let's go into the calculation stage, go to environment group. I'm going to drag BP server function over here. And what this is going to tell us is a true or false. Are we using a blue prism server? That is, are we using an application server for this environment right now? And the next thing I'll do is I will create this data item, which I've already typed into it as is BP server. And I'm going to click create. I went ahead and did this because I think it's, it'll save us a little bit of time. And you could probably name your data items, whatever you want. But just to point out that you're not missing anything. I'm not typing this in the video. It's already typed out, but I haven't created it yet. So let me go ahead and click create and you'll see it pop up here. I'm going to click OK, go back over here, verify that data item is there. I'll be linking this stage in here so that it runs. I will always be clicking reset and then I'll click run. So I want to point that out. That's going to happen each time here, but I may not have it in the video. I'll also be clicking uh, the X on this breakpoint reached because it does pop up whenever you reach that breakpoint. So it looks like we got true for is BP server. And that's because I am running this process on an application server right now. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually log out and we're going to come back and I'm going to show you this running this process again to get this function if I were to connect directly to the database and not use an application server. All right, we're back into our process in Zoom view. I am directly connected to the database down here. My connection now says Dave the RPA guy instead of BP server for Dave the RPA guy. I'm gonna move over to my environment functions page. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this after having changed the speed so that it'll run faster. Is BP server says false. So we can prove here that you do get a different output based upon whether or not you are logging in through an application server or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly log out of this and log back in through the application server and we'll continue with our next function. We are back now, logged in through our, our application server. Our next function is going to be to get the BP version. I'm going to go into this calculation stage, look at my environment variables group, drag BP version major onto the calculation, and I'm going to click evaluate expression. What you can see we get out of that is six. Now let me just switch this out and show you the other one. BP version minor evaluate expression brings us two. So we can see that the major version being six, the minor version being two gives us 6.2. Just personal preference here. I like to drag in this and do a little concatenation with a period in between so that I get an output of my BP version being 6.2. I'm going to go ahead and create the data item, click OK, connect the stages in. All right, I've changed the debug speed back to maximum now, so we can go ahead and run this. BP version is 6.2. All right, that's what we wanted. The next function is going to be to get the clipboard. Let's go ahead and type something just randomly into get clipboard. This is my text and I'm just going to copy that. I just want us to have something in the clipboard that we can see as an output. I'm going to go into my environment group here and get clipboard and then let's create the data item, connect our stages in and our output is this is my text. Perfect. You can use this for a variety of purposes, but just to quickly point out the reason you might want to get the clipboard is, for example, if you're working with an application where the best way to get the data out of it is to do a control A to select all the text, a control C to copy that text to the clipboard, and then you want to get the clipboard data here so you can work with it in a data item. That'd be the sort of the purpose of that. Our next function is going to be to get the BP connection name. 
go into our environment group here and get connection. You'll notice here that I'm naming this a little bit different. Some of these will just say like get connection and that's fine, but I like to put in the BP prefix whenever it is specific to Blue Prism, whereas things like OS architecture that will work with below is specific to the operating system and not BP. I'm gonna create my data item, click OK. We'll link in our stages. Our output is BP server for Dave the RPA guy, which is exactly accurate. This will be useful whenever you are, say, trying to troubleshoot some problems you're running into, or uh, let's say you're just running some analytics on your data output from your logs. Whatever the case is, it can be useful to deconflict the log output that's coming from a runtime resource that's on your dev environment compared to the log output from your runtime resource on the production environment. And this is one of probably a couple ways to identify the difference between those. This is obviously important to make sure that your Blue Prism connections are named properly. And that's why I wouldn't rely on this too much because somebody can just go in and change their connection name and now you've lost your ability to properly deconflict the uh, the connections. The next function is to get IE version number, that is Internet Explorer. Go in here into our environment group, grab get IE version major. We don't have a function for getting the minor version, so we'll just drop this in. Otherwise, I would probably do a concatenation like I did with the BP version and we'll go ahead and create the data item. Let's run a test here. All right, our IE version number is 11. The reason you might wanna know this is if you are working with web applications and let's say that one of your bots has a problem, can't seem to access the web application like it's supposed to, but other bots running the same process automation are not struggling to do the same thing. If it's a web application, then it might be good for you to be able to check the logs and just find out really quickly if that bot has a different version of IE than other bots do. Our next function is gonna be to get OS architecture Architecture. This is going to tell us whether we have the 64-bit or 32-bit version of Windows. Create our data item. All right, so what we got out of it was 64-bit. And again, this is just going to be another helpful troubleshooting piece of information. Sometimes what you can have is some incompatibility between architectures, 64-bit and 32-bit. This just may be another piece of information that you'd want to know whenever you're troubleshooting that. The next function is going to be to get the operating system version name. Let's go drop in the operating system version and create our data item. Click OK. All right, so we got Windows 10 out of our operating system version name. The next function is to get the operating system version number. Here's another one that what we're gonna do is combine two different functions together. Get OS version major. I want to concatenate that with a dot between it and get OS version minor so that we get something like 10.0, 10.1, 10.2 for the Windows version. That's what we got, OS version 10.0. Our next function is to get the Blue Prism runtime resource name. Now the function for this is just gonna be get resource name, but what it means is the runtime resource name. So whatever Blue Prism calls the resource that you're working on, likely this will equal the name of the machine. This is not necessarily the same thing as the machine name, and I'll show you why that's the case in just a second here. Create our data item. So what we got out of this was Alpha Centauri, which is the name of my machine, underscore debug. This is where I was talking about, this is going to be your machine name, but it's not exactly the same thing. And that's because if you're running in Process Studio, it's considered debug mode. It'll have this underscore debug next to the resource name. If you see something like this in the logs, that means somebody had Process Studio open while they were running the process, as opposed to running in Control Room, which will not have this next to it. Instead, will match exactly to the machine name. Our next function is get BP session ID. Let's go inside this stage and look at it here. The Blue Prism session ID is going to be a unique identifier for each session that you run. And this is actually going to output here. Notice that we do have a session ID. So even in debug mode, you do have a session ID. And so if, if you have some kind of logic where it's requiring the use of the session ID, you can in fact still run that logic when you're in Process Studio. It doesn't require you to have a session running in control room to get this information. Let's go ahead and create our data item. And you can see here that it gave us the same output that we could see from inside the calculation stage when we clicked evaluate expression. Our next 
function is to get the Blue Prism session start time. I should mention I'm, I'm naming this slightly misleadingly. And if we go into the environment here and click on get start time, what it's technically telling you is when did this process get started? So a session will start a process, but I generally just call this a Blue Prism session start time. Let's drag on get start time here, create our data item. All right, so we tested this BP session start time. What we got out of it was August 6, 2018 at 2.07 a.m. Now I can tell you it's not actually 2.07 right now. I'm not creating a video at two o'clock in the morning. It's in fact 10.07 here because I'm four hours behind UTC. And so you can see here that this date time output from BP session start time is in UTC format. Our next function is to get is stop requested. In the environment group here, we'll get is stop requested. I'm gonna click evaluate expression and what this is going to tell us is false, that there is no stop requested right now. What this actually is, is a session variable. Somebody from control room can say, I want this session to stop, but I want it to stop when it's safe for that process to do so. So we have this in a calculation stage right now, right? But imagine that you had this in a decision stage instead, and it would check to see if somebody has requested a stop from control room. And if this, the answer is true, that somebody has requested a stop, we should take a number of steps to shut down the system or, or close those applications so that we can stop the session and the bot is not left in a weird state with windows popped up all over the place. All right, so we went ahead and tested this just like I showed you while we were in the stage with evaluate expression that it comes out to false. We won't be able to see true here. Our next function is get is single sign on. And of course that's not the name of the function just like it hasn't been for most of these, but we'll go in and see it's pretty closely related. Single sign on is the name of the function. And what this outputs is true or false, a Boolean output about whether or not what we're logged into right now, whether we are logged in with a single sign on or not through active directory. I'm gonna create my data item. You can see this came out to false because I am not signed in through Active Directory. If I were, then this would come out to true. We have one final function to go over. You may have noticed that when we got down to get is stop requested, we skipped over one of our functions. So we're gonna go in there now and grab that function. Let's go in the environment group and scroll down. Right here is get username. This is gonna be getting the user who started the current session. I'm gonna go ahead and create my data data item and let's look at the output from that. I'll connect my stage in, move the data item here, reset, run. Now you can see what we got out of this was Dave the RPA guy and that's because that's the name of the user I'm logged into in Blue Prism right now. However, if I had run this from control room, actually I would still get Dave the RPA guy if I ran it manually, but if I ran it using scheduler, meaning I decided a certain time in the future, recurring or not, that I wanted this to run, then Blue Prism, the application server, is going to be running this. And so instead of saying the user, it'll say the word scheduler. So I hope this has been been useful for you. My goal here was to give sort of a quick intro to each of these functions. I haven't shown an extensive use of each of them, right? But I think it's important to first go through every function and make sure that you understand what's there so that whenever you come across a situation, when you're building a process automation, you know whether or not there is already an inbuilt function for what you're trying to do rather than when you run into that problem, then go and look through all of the VBOs, the inbuilt functions, finding out whether Blue Prism has that capability. It's a good idea to, to find that out ahead of time. All right, so that was our look at the environment functions. So let's step out of zoom view here and just take a step back. And what we have looked at is a number of useful functions to get data about the environment, whether that's about Blue Prism or about the machine itself. In my opinion, this isn't data that you need to really justify why you would include it with the exception of get clipboard. That might be something you wouldn't wanna just include all the time because of the types of data that could be in that. But the rest of these about the environment, you wanna go ahead and include that in any log output data you're doing so that you've got the highest level of fidelity that you can get and they can be super helpful for identifying problems. Well, we have gone through the environment functions in Blue Prism. I hope that you can see the value in using these. Upon first glance, you may not see a real purpose. You might immediately think, okay, well, you know, maybe that's good to get that information, but for logging output, analytics output, remember those and use them when you come across a situation that they're necessary in a process automation.